Today is the first of my five minute journal club series. Now, of course, the first time I'm doing the journal club is actually gonna be longer, not because the analysis is gonna take more than five minutes, but there's a little special reaction video I wanna do toward the end. So let's talk about the trial that we're gonna do today. And that's the Crash 3 trial. I have a little presentation here, so we'll just dive right into that now. So the Crash Tree trial was published in October of 2019 in The Lancet. Essentially, it's the effects of tranexamic acid on death, deliability, and vascular occlusion events in head injury. So let's talk a little bit, bit about it. Tranexamic acid is a drug that we use to treat hemorrhage. It's essentially a clot stabilizer. It stops the breakdown of fibrin after it's formed. So what we do is we hope that by giving tranexamic acid, that bleeding will stop, or in the case of intracranial hemorrhage, there won't be a progression, there won't be more bleeding. The trial tested one gram initially, and then a second gram over eight hours, which is very familiar to those of us in trauma because that was actually the protocol that was used in the CRASH-2 trial. That was practice changing and most of us actually use tranexamic acid on a very frequent basis, if not on a daily basis, when managing our trauma patients. So what did they do? They wanted to actually give the drug for patients who had head injuries, and they wanted to look at the death and disability at 28 days. Now, initially, they were looking at patients who had injury and treatment before eight hours, and also they were looking at patients who had a GCS less than three initially, so three to 12, um, but less than three in bilateral unreactive pupils was a very specific group that they wanted to exclude. Now, they had to include them initially, but it was a pre-specified sensitivity that they decided to remove later on. And I'll explain that a little bit more as we move on because it's very relevant to the interpretation of the results. So what were the exclusion and exclusion criteria? Well, the inclusion criteria included patients who had traumatic brain injuries that were randomized within three hours of the injury to treatment. Again, I mentioned before that initially we're looking at up to eight hours, but in the middle of the study, they decided to change the protocol because they were concerned that by including patients who were treated later, that it would lower the treatment effect, and that's important coming up. In addition, they had to have a GCS less than 12, and they had to have some kind of hemorrhage within the brain or in the skull. It's important that they excluded people who had significant external hemorrhage. And the reason why that is was because the CRASH-2 trial showed a significant mortality benefit in patients who had extracranial hemorrhage. And as a result, it wouldn't be ethical to randomize those to placebo because we already knew that in that population, there was a survival benefit. And again, adults uh, is what they're looking at and they didn't want those extracranial cases. Interestingly, they initially had uh, up to eight hours of treatment, but that was changed to three in the middle of the protocol, which is important when we think about internal validity of a study. So what were the results? Well, they recruited 12,737 patients. That's actually more than they originally planned. Originally, they planned to recruit 10,000 patients, and the reason why they chose to increase the number was because by decreasing the window of time and at the same time recognizing that the more severe patients were less likely to benefit, they had to review their power calculations and they needed to actually increase the amount of recruitment. So in the end, they had 6,400 in the treatment group, 6,300 in the placebo group, pretty similar. And then these are the outcomes essentially by mortality. So here is the results, essentially, the results table for this trial. So let's look at a couple of things, first of all. So if we look at the overall, and this is really important, there was no different. This large diamond represents the overall. And in this type of force plot, if you have it cross one in this case, then that's considered a non-significant result. Now, significance is a philosophical thing, but the concern is whenever we're doing a study 
that random chance could be responsible for what we're seeing. And so we set a threshold that the likelihood that it was a random effect has to be estimated to be less than one in 20. And if it crosses the one using this 95% confidence interval diamond, that means that we can't say that the chance of it being less than one of 20 has been met. So we have to say it's statistically insignificant, which is super important because that actually makes this a negative trial. By this primary outcome, by this overall number, which is what they went into actually calculated at the end of the day, was actually a negative trial. And recognize that this overall number actually doesn't even include um, an attention to treat analysis. This is a smaller number based on people who actually were in the treatment groups. Remember, randomization occurred, uh, and when randomization occurred, there was 6,400 in the treatment group and 6,300 in the placebo group. So those are some concerns for internal validity of the study. That being said, the authors did recognize that having a GCS less than three and having pupils that were unreactive were very poor prognostic indicators. And the fact was is that if you included that group of patients, they would have a much less sensitive trial. So they did exclude them in their pre-specified plan. And we can see some of that come out here in this force plot. First of all, if you take away non-reactive pupils and they have at least one reactive pupil, then you see actually a significant benefit of using tranexamic acid. Now, if you break it down even further to the patients who have the mild head injury that are between nine and 15 versus three and eight, again, we have a much more powerful effect. You actually see a mortality benefit by giving tranexamic acid. Now, a couple of things are worth mentioning. Remember, our inclusion criteria included patients who had a GCS less than 12. So really only talking about a GCS between nine and 12 that we're looking at here. And the patients who have a GCS of three to eight have no difference. You can see there's really, uh, the relative risk is 0.99. It might as well be one. It might as well be no different. So the group of patients that are going to benefit are the ones that have just mild symptoms when it comes to head injury and are treated with tranexamic acid. Now, they also took a look at time, and they said, well, if you delay the time in treatment, you have a difference in mortality. And if they're given the tranexamic acid right away, really before 60 minutes, that's when we're going to see the biggest effect. And in fact, if you wait to beyond 180 to 240 minutes, you're basically not having any effect here. You can start to see that the 95% confidence intervals are crossing that one line. And again, in severe cases, there was no difference because we saw no difference. And recognize who is severe in this one. Severe is four to eight, because they took away three. And GCS is uh, nine to 15 in the mild to moderate. So let's talk about the weaknesses of the study as we get to the end here. First of all, it's a negative study. The primary outcome included those patients who had GCS of three and had, a, had unreactive pupils. Those were ultimately excluded, but remember, we have to set a primary outcome for us to determine that this study is valid. Because at the end of the day, you are at risk of doing data mining on your own study and finding positive results, and that's actually uh, you know, concerning methodologic behavior. So you have to pick a primary outcome. And unfortunately, the primary outcome on the study was negative. Secondly, there's a major change to the protocol within the middle of the study, which was actually designed to increase the likelihood they'd find an effect. And again, that's highly concerning. If you're looking at the data in the middle of the study and saying, oh, you know, we're seeing effect in this subgroup and now we're going to shift our focus towards that subgroup, there's definitely risk that you're going to be biasing the study internally. So those are two very serious issues with the CRASH-3 trial and I think have to be mentioned. There are some strengths though. This is a large study. 12,000 patients in trauma is very rare. And in fact, a randomized placebo controlled trial, and when we read it, the quality of the placebo was excellent. It was uh, unidentifiable, great randomization. Those things are rare in trauma studies. So it's nice to see that. Lastly, it was a multi-centered trial with multiple different countries. 
And as a result, we can have pretty good external generalizability from that type of study, which is pretty cool. And lastly, it's a really important clinical issue. At this point, we have very little treatment. In fact, this would be considered level one evidence. We actually have almost no level one trials on traumatic brain injuries and, and treatments. So to have a drug treatment that has a potential to actually save lives in this important patient population is huge. So that's essentially the end of the journal club. As I move on, the question you're gonna ask yourself, well, what are you doing? You're a trauma surgeon, what's your plan? Well, although there are significant weaknesses to the study and I'm quite concerned about the internal validity of this trial, it's probably the best that we'll ever see on tranexamic acid in head injury. And in fact, I don't think I'm gonna see a trial this size and this quality on head injury during my practice. So the best I can do is take the evidence that's available, and this is the strongest evidence, and try to apply it to my patients, because we do see trauma patients with head injuries in my institution frequently. So I am going to, and already have, begun using tranexamic acid in our head injury population. Now, the bonus part of this is so interesting, and this is where I get excited, and that's the idea of communication. You see, this trial was a negative study, and there's lots of issues with it, but it was an expensive study. Millions of dollars, national funding, grants, big names in the design of the study. So what do you do when you've got a negative study and there are some concerning issues with it? Well, you sell the positives, and this is a great lesson in marketing. So let's talk about this first of all. They produce this very interesting infographic about tranexamic acid, try to promote their, their study. And they said, can tranexamic acid reduce death from traumatic brain injury? Okay, and talks a little bit about what the drug is and talks about the trial. 29 countries, 175 hospitals, 12,000 patients. And here was their summary. Tranexamic acid can save one in five people who would have died following a mild to moderate head injury. Now this is so interesting because they are making it sound like the number needed to treat is five but it's not. Actually, this is a relative risk reduction. The number needed to treat is more like 60. So your TXA would save one in 60 patients if you're given it in mild to moderate head injury, but that's not how they chose to sell it. Very interesting, very interesting way of promoting their work. I'm actually impressed, I kinda love it. I think that's great. I think, I think we need to do more sensational stuff but as a doctor, you need to be critical of this and realize it's not one in five, it's one in 60. They talk about the time, and remember that graph, that's, that's the nine to 15 GCS group. And remember, of course, you didn't come into the study unless you had a GCS less than 12. So we're talking about just a small group of patients who that applied to, and that's sometimes what happens when you have a trial of 12,000 patients, and again, uh, they reiterate that point of the time relationship and they talk about the safety. And I think, although I didn't uh, show you that data, there wasn't a meaningful difference in uh, negative outcomes when you give tranexamic acid. So let's do one more thing. I think this is really cool. I want to show you the presentation on YouTube actually of this study. So they have a little video, which I think is really cool. And we'll watch it together and I'll just react a little bit to it, uh, elements. It's only about two and a half minutes long. Every day, all over the world, tens of thousands of people of different ages and backgrounds will sustain an unexpected injury to the head. Whether that be through sports injuries, a trip or fall, or a So absolutely, traumatic crash, brain injuries are brain incredibly important. They can affect anybody in any country, and unfortunately we don't have any good treatments for dealing with the bleeding that happens within the brain after a traumatic head injury. As the volume of blood increases, it exerts pressure inside the skull. Again, super significant number year, of people have these injuries. And it's true, even a small treatment effect in a large group of people, and as they point injury. out, it's a growing population, can have a significant impact. Absolutely important. Exciting. Coordinated by the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, CRASH-3 is the largest randomized control trial ever conducted into traumatic brain injury.
And it's absolutely true. It's probably one of the largest randomized trials that we'll see in trauma. It'd probably be the largest randomized trial I'll see in head injury and trauma in my career and lifetime. Previous trials showed that this treatment is successful in preventing death. And tranexamic acid is cheap and readily available. If that drug could this have an effect, then there's a big impact on the global health from trauma. Preventing intracranial hemorrhage too. Crash 3 showed that this hypothesis was right. The results provided evidence of three and This is the things. part of the video that I start First, to start to get a little bit Second, frustrated with. Early treatment with it's acid talking about the outcomes as if and third, there's the effect of the treatment is greater the earlier it as is if given. it's unrefutable Each as if it's leads to a set the reality is there's numbers of issues this with this trial on its internal validity a number of concerns that actually make us question whether really this benefit is as significant as we think thanks for listening this is knife skills check out some of the other videos i've done on journals and critical appraisal and i'm going to keep coming to you with new journal clubs as new trials and evidence come out that pique my interest and are worth sharing with you